Okay, we are here live with Christina Martin. Thank you so much for meeting with me, Christina. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, it's so nice. You know, I just taught, uh, I just taught a class a couple weeks ago and in it they asked me, uh, we had a Q&A afterward and at one point someone asked me, do you pay any attention to your competition? They were like, what do you think? And I was thinking to myself, well, no, I mean, we're not competitive. And I was like, well, there's a, there's a little pod of us all doing the same kind of thing. And I was thinking of you and a couple others. And I was like, and we're, we're not competitive at all. In fact, we love each other and we like to collaborate because we each have our own color of crayon in the crayon box. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to kind of say hi to each other across the ethers from time to time, because what we find is we're all kind of going through the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And we all have our different little flavors and our different little ways that we do things. But generally, we're all, we're all the same. Like, we all come from the same, I don't know, ships or mm -hmm. lineage or past life or whatever you want to say. So what I would love to ask you about first, because I feel like there are a lot of people right now who are just starting to get into the spiritual, new agey vibe world. Mm -hmm. And so... What I would love to know is any, first off, any of your own history you'd like to share about how you went from like matrix world to this world and also any tips you have for people about how they can connect to that deeper, subtler, more powerful spiritual side of themselves and of creation. Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think honestly, awakening to who I, who I really am came from a lot of pain. I know that a lot of star seeds and, and people who have, have missions here, I feel like they purposely choose to go through painful situations to awaken like much quicker. And I used to curse God. I used to curse the universe. I was like, why did you put me here on earth? I hate it here. Um, but then, you know, over time I saw that I had really chosen to, to go through a lot of darkness and see people suffering with mental illness and, you know, drug addictions and just the most horrible things around me to, to really, um, understand the darkness of earth so I could choose something else so I could really see the whole picture and, and wake up and, and move on my mission faster. So I think it, it really does come down to um, pain often, which is not what people want to hear. Uh, that the suffering of earth here is, is so beautiful and so sacred and it helps us grow so much. And it, it is, it's a good thing. Ultimately, like the, the challenges we go through and the drama here, it's, it's just so beautiful when you think about it on a grand perspective, like in our spiritual forms, we're, we're complete and we're whole and we're divine and we're just singing in heaven somewhere. <laughs> but on earth, it's just like, you know, we're in limitation and we can't do everything we want. We're in time. And it's, it's frustrating to start seeds. It's like I can manifest entire worlds with my hands in other forms, but here I have to play by these weird rules and laws and, and like, Oh, it's just confusing, but I think um, when we do awaken and, and look at life from a broader perspective, and meditation honestly helped me with that, just being able to look at myself in a, uh, you know, from a higher perspective, from a, an objective viewpoint, I think we do start to see that life is, is kind of like a game that we've chosen to play in order to facilitate some growth, in order to just enjoy ourselves and learn about consciousness and uh to get to that point where you really do see that the suffering of, of the world and like the darkness of the world is, is actually beautiful. Um, can be difficult. So that's why we're doing what we do. I feel like just to, we're here to just kind of help people on the path and, and be guides for people. And, um, I really feel that we're all here doing that for each other. I feel that, um, we all have these codes act, uh, within us and it's not so much that we have to come here and learn everything. Um, while we are learning how to be human and, and everything and it's beautiful, there, there are so many gifts within us from other lifetimes, from other timelines, from, from other places. And it's really just about uh, moving inside your body and learning how to work with your own energy. And when you really start to uh, work with that inner energy, like some people call it prana, kundalini, whatever, when you start to become aware of it, it does the work for you. And it just, you just become activated and past life memories come up, um, you know, just, gifts that you didn't even know you had come up. So I think that I'm really, I'm, I know personally, I'm really trying to help people work with energy as an energy healer. And so I feel like if people start to uh, learn how to work with that, 
then life just becomes a lot more manageable and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was beautiful. I love how you talked about the shadow and um, how, how, how you say that it's about working with the energy within us. I think that that is something that's revolutionary in so many ways, because even if you look at the education systems in the world right now, we're taught, okay, learn this thing from outside, learn this thing from mm -hmm. outside, the stuff you've got going on inside. I mean, maybe if you want to take a heuristic approach to your research or if you want to blah, 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 but it's usually you look at what someone else is doing and you do that and you get an A. Mm -hmm. And what I think, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So on the spiritual path, I, I find a lot of people coming to me and saying, well, what I want to do is essentially what you do. Like I want to teach and I want to write and I want to have spiritual gatherings and I want to give people readings or whatever it is. And what I often find myself saying is like, yay, guidepost. I mean, it's like when you learn a language, you learn the words that are already there and then you form your own senses. But then there's that sweet spot where you've got your accumulated tools and then you work with your own frequency. And that's also why like in the beginning we were saying competition, there's no such thing as competition because we're all slightly different. So whatever that resonance is, you're going to resonate with who you resonate with and you don't, it's not a limited supply. Mm -hmm. So I definitely know that, that when we come here to earth, whether or not this is our first time here or whether or not we've been here since the beginning, mm -hmm. it, what I feel like is that we come here because I, I first, I feel like we were chomping at the bit to get here mm -hmm. because we're transforming earth into this thing. And the way we transform it into this thing is to see where the problems are, which mm -hmm. is often why many of us, of us have been abused, have been diagnosed have been whatever the thing is that says, this is the problem really big and huge right in front of you and within you. Mm -hmm. And then we learn to find the frequencies of the solution, embody them, then generate them. And I feel like as we then generate them, we link up with each other and create this new golden age that comes up from within and then will continue to blossom. So I would love to know your thoughts on, especially talking to people who are like, this world doesn't work right. It's, things, aren't, mm -hmm. things aren't going the way that they should go. It, it needs to be different. <laughs> what are ways that you think that people can, can start to hold that frequency within them to soothe and heal themselves and then to generate it outward to be a force of soothing and healing and lighting the way for the world around them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I really have used astrology a lot on my path to understand, understand the bigger picture, to really like comprehend why things are happening. So we, we come from a really dark age where we are um, obsessed with materialism. We've forgotten our spirituality. We look to the external for gratification, for to be appreciated, for worthiness. We're obsessed with money or, you know, we're, we're asleep essentially. Um, but we are awakening into this golden age of enlightenment um, and all the, the ancient cultures, the Maya and the Egyptians and the, um, the Vedas and, and, you know, all these, these uh, ancient cultures knew that there was going to be some kind of alignment on, in 2012 with the sun and the galactic center, and it was going to upgrade us somehow. So I really feel, this is a personal theory, but I really feel that the stars and the planets are, are activating our DNA and just like waking us up on, on this energetic level. And I can really feel it. And if you just, if anyone tunes in, like I'm not special, like if anyone tunes in, they can feel it. And you just have to be kind of still and, and allow it to, to, to move into you. Because uh, if you stay too much in the head and you're like, you know, uh, things are bad, nothing will change. And you're not receptive and you're not, um, you know, honoring the feminine. Uh, and that's the way I, I used to be. I was like, no, I have to be strong. <laughs> um, you know, it's going to be a lot harder for these forces to work through you. So I would just say move into the heart space. Um, that's really what we're, we're doing now in in this age like we're learning how to be in the heart space we're awakening to the divine feminine and that isn't to say like women are going to rule the world i mean that would be nice but <laughs> um it's going to be more like you know the feminine masculine are going to be balanced within us and instead of just being in the heart in the head we're, we're moving into the heart and we're going to live in coherence and i talk about um moving into the fourth density in my in my book that's mentioned healing 
and for me that really is correlated to the heart chakra so we're actually moving our energy in there instead of having it be in our will center and solar plexus chakra which is i need to fight uh i need to protect my my physical body other people are my enemy you know um there's an other but we realize that there isn't another actually when we get to the root root of, of what we are so I don't even remember the question, but I know, it has <laughs> was, to, <laughs> I know it has something to do with like being more peaceful and being the light and everything. So I think that, uh, yeah, moving into the heart and just being with yourself and, and talking to your heart and even just like, like moving inside your heart with your own consciousness and being like, you know, this is what I am. This, like, well, I'm questioning, like, what am I? Who am I? And if you question deep enough, the answer is always love. The answer is always like infinite potential and power and just, <laughs> you just have to, you just have to like question, you just have to be with yourself long enough and then all the darkness, yeah, fades away and it sounds really hippy dippy, but it's true. Like, <laughs> so, it's so true. Like if you just, you know, seek deep enough, there, there is only love and then yeah, that's all that you have to give. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree. I have nothing to add. I think that's absolutely true. And just, well, one thing, you know, if people think, well, if I just focus on love, I won't get anything done, but actually, and you know, this, the truth is when you, when you take even just two minutes a day, like in some of my classes, I'm like, all you have to do is two minutes. Everyone can afford two minutes, like two minutes to just sit and, and just listen to the behind the thoughts. Mm -hmm. refill yourself up connect with your heart and then what ends up happening is all that other stuff you have to do is way easier yes. it's counterintuitive because logic tells us something else but the truth i mean logic's not real or else this world would work better you know mm -hmm. so okay um i had two more questions for you okay two more questions for you the first one is i would love to know what you experienced before and after december 21st 2012 because i definitely saw a difference it was subtle at the time ish but now that I look back, I'm like, whoa, yes, of course. So what did you experience now that we're, you know, six years out the gate almost? What do you think? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't think about my past all the time now. Um, I know I was a lot more in my head. I was really judgmental. I was, I, was, I was kind of a mean asshole, to be honest. Like, I wasn't a nice person all the time. I was just, like, constantly judging people because I thought I had to protect myself. I, I was really in that, like masculine state of I, you know I have to fight other people and I have to become better than other people I was really like suffering from my abuse and all this stuff but we, we grow and we heal um so yeah I, I after the, the shift I really did feel my heart opening like in on an energetic level I was like what is this what is this love I'm feeling like and I you know I just kept exploring it and I feel that um my higher chakras were kind of open and I, I don't know think I was doing meditation in the right way. I didn't have an instructor at that time. So I was doing it in a little bit of a dangerous way. I was trying to like bring my energy up into my third eye. And I started like channeling and talking to aliens and all this stuff. And I was like, I was telling my boyfriend at the time, he was like, I think you're going crazy. I think you're straight up going crazy. So I was like, yep. <laughs> um, all right, I can't talk to you and I can't talk to my best friend because they think I'm going crazy. <laughs> I guess I'll just talk to the internet. <laughs> and then, you know, I met other people who, who were going through the same thing and I was like, okay, obviously this is something that's happening to all of us. Um, yeah, what did you experience with that? Um, well, 2012, gosh, the main thing, well, first off, I definitely had missing time at the moment. At the moment of whenever it was supposed to be, I, I came to about a half hour after the moment, because I think I was on the East Coast. It was like two something a.m. That, that it went down, you know, apparently. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming to, I was at the house of the person I was in a relationship with at the time. So I came to on the bed, fully clothed on top of the covers, makeup still on, which I never, never do. I'm pretty religious about my morning and nighttime routines. And I don't sleep on top of the covers. And I was just perfectly laying there like someone had laid me down on the bed mm. alone. My boyfriend was nowhere to be seen. And I woke up and I felt weird. And I went into the living room and he's sitting on the couch, passed out, just sitting up, passed out. And I go over to him and I'm like, hey, did you take me into the bedroom? Because I figured maybe I'd fallen asleep and he'd carry me and lay me down or whatever. Because I just woke up in there and he said, no, you didn't. And I said, I definitely did. Yes, I did. <laughs> I just woke up in there. 
And we both realized that we couldn't remember what had happened before we fell asleep. We couldn't remember what we were doing. We didn't know. And so then that, that was the micro, which was, okay, wow, that's some serious shit. Duly noted, moving on. Because as you well know, that's all you can really do. I mean, when you see a super epic spaceship, when you have a super epic interaction, there's some crazy synchronicity happens that's really apparent in like movie stuff. Mm-hmm. You just have to be like, okay, got it, <laughs> keep going, you know? <laughs> so, but, but now that I've zoomed out, what I see first off is it was way easier it's been way easier to stay in a place of deeper connection Mm. to the unseen. You can feel it. It's like all these filters were taken off or dissolved. Mm. You can feel it more. You can be there more. I've definitely noticed that manifestation is way easier before. It wasn't even like trying to swim through mud. It was like trying to swim through freaking gravel, you know, just like always clunk, 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 clunk. And now, not that there aren't challenges, there are still definitely challenges, But it's just, it's like the reality is more fluid. Mm -hmm. Even physical reality is more ephemeral and it kind of locks in a little bit better. It's not such a dichotomy. And also I have definitely absolutely met droves of people who are on similar paths, who are more woke, so to speak, or, or aware of energy, aware of the chakra system, aware that the words we speak have power, understand things like you should create um, kindness around you, understand things like conscious manifestation and that what you do matters. Mm -hmm. And generally that people are more open. Even people who aren't necessarily on the spiritual path, you can talk to them about the stuff and they're not like, you're crazy, which definitely happens sometimes, especially before then. And still now does, as you well know, you also have a YouTube. And so I know that you probably get crazy comments like I do sometimes, which are like, you're crazy and whatever. But um, (laughs) a lot just kinder and so I know it's like, it's the world. It's part of the world. Okay, that's fine. You're allowed to have your opinions. But things just got softer and easier and more aligned, I think, with, with like, you know, 5D maybe. Which brings me to my last question. I want to know all about fifth dimensional healing. Do tell. It's the newest book that you've written. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, the idea for this book, I don't know. It kind of came to me as like a download. I feel like it was channeled through me. And I try to think about what I wrote about. And I'm like, I, I don't even have ever any memory of writing the book. Like, it was just, <laughs> it's like, I know the concept and I know the theories, but it's like, I don't know if you feel that way with writing. Like, you just kind of like, do you feel like you channel when you write? Like, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like big packets of information. And even yeah. in my old YouTube videos, at this point, I have several hundred and I don't even remember what I talk about. And some of them mm-hmm. are like, oh yeah, great. I mean, I still believe whatever it is, but I don't retain it. Yeah. 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 I feel that. Yeah. So basically... Um, the healing method in itself is a holistic healing modality and it's comprised of different techniques which include energy healing and meditation, magical intention, um, visualization, breath works. So essentially um, they're safe for everyone to try too and it's really helpful for PTSD and anxiety and like if you're just getting triggered and you don't know how to deal with your emotions like it, it, it will help you <laughs> master your emotional realm and just come back to your center. So um, you can use them at any time. They're, they're, they're super safe and they basically help you learn how to navigate your inner world. So I really feel like we're not taught this, like how to be with, just be with ourselves and go inside ourselves and navigate the universe inside of ourselves. And if we do that, we see that the entire world that, that we see is being manifest from, from within us. I, I really feel that like we're, all manifesting our own universes somehow they're intersecting but we have the power to kind of affect what we what we see um, by fixing our energy within so a lot of it is focused on moving into certain emotions that get trapped in the body like in organs or in energy meridians and finding a way to safely release that and there are very safe ways to release it and you can look in the book and do the exercises and you can tweak them however you want like it's it's not rigid it's more so like um, here's how you can use your intuition, try it out. <laughs> um, and I use them personally myself to deal with like traumatic, traumatic abuse from, from my past. Um, and what I've really, really found just through my own experience and just watching people carry so much pain from the past is that we really don't have to, we don't have to even think about our past because we are constantly in the moment. We are constantly new and we have the power to cr- create ourselves in like just 
in any moment we're new. It's just, it's epic. Um, but I think a lot of people still really hold on to their story and think, well, it happened, so that's me. I am that collection of thoughts. I am, I am that collection of random memories and beliefs from movies I've seen and, and who knows what. It, um, so it's really about kind of questioning those, those deeper thoughts and, and helping people choose to, to let go of what doesn't serve them and, and really just align with who they truly are, which is you know, infinite love. <laughs> Oh, thank you. And thank you for making that work. I know that people are so, so, so hungry for techniques mm. and for things that they can do. Because it's wonderful to go to a healer, but so much better to be your own healer. Yeah. Oh, that's, mm. that's the main me message. I, that's my main like mission. I decided like <laughs> teach people how to heal themselves because we're all powerful, powerful healers and magicians, and, you know, whatever we want. We want to be um, awakened to your true potential so they can awaken to their true potential and just live in enlightenment. I really feel that enlightenment is our natural state of being. It's not something that we have to really work really hard for and do all these things to get. It's, it's what arises when we just become still and all the, the, the beautiful things, the most beautiful things we could ever possibly want arise in the moment from within us when, when we're still. So, yeah. <laughs> mm, thank you so much. Thank you for, for being present here and for taking this path, which is not an easy one to walk, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everyone's really appreciated seeing you, you embody so beautifully what we're here to do. And so I would love to know what love is. Sorry, you cut out just a little bit. What's oh, that's okay. Um, I was, oh, I just said thank you for embodying because you're one of those people, like you can look at you and just see, see Starseed. You know, and I know that you hold the flag for a lot of people to see, okay, this is how we live on earth while we're also from, and not only from the stars, mm -hmm. but also I know you've been around in Atlantis and Lemuria and all <laughs> the places that we've all hung out throughout. Yeah. You know, it's, it's true. We've been around. You too, obviously. And, and so I would, <laughs> here we are again. We always come back. Um, so, so I would love though to know, because one thing I've been trying to work on with, especially this internet world is, you know, we give a lot of energy out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that my YouTube channel, I don't even, I mean, maybe I'll change this one day, but until now, I don't even run ads on my YouTube channel because oh. I'm like, you know what? This is a gift. Mm -hmm. I don't make any money from my YouTube. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is a gift. I want to give it. Um, but sometimes that does, that has created an energetic imbalance. And sometimes it's created stuff that I then have to heal from or dislodge out of me or whatever. So to try to shift that a little bit, I would love to know for you, what is a wish that you have? What is something that you would like to receive from the universe that the people watching can help you with, with their gratitude and intention of all this information and gift and embodiment that you just give them? I would like for people to just be kind to themselves and offer themselves more love. Sit for two minutes a day if you have to, or, or five minutes a day and just be with yourself and, uh, if you feel called to explore potential healing, you can check that out and um, just tell people about it. Cause I really, it, it really is my intention for it to reach as many people as possible. Not because it's going to make me rich. You really don't make a lot of money off of book royalties. It's not my intention. It's really, it really is a, um, I, I really want it to be a catalyst for a lot of people to, to awaken. It's kind of like a, a guidebook for navigating life on earth as a human and navigating the shift and just like being, being better. And, um, I wish I had had it personally when I was going through my awakening. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in, in my work, just tell people about it and just be honest. I think a lot of people are afraid to be honest these days because we're just living in a place that is so filled with darkness. And it's like, I have to play big, I have to hide things just to exist here. And that's, it's really sad. And it's gotten me into a lot of trouble because I don't know how to shut my mouth sometimes. Um, but I think if we all start to, Come together and realize that collectively we're choosing to feed the darkness and we just begin to rise up about uh, you know up out of it and just speak our truth and just keep sharing anyway even if it makes other people uncomfortable or even if it jeopardizes certain things i think this world will, will really shift but that shift's going to come from within so um yeah move in, move into the light move into the heart space and just be good to yourself because change is not going to come from without it always comes from within just love. Just love. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. And thank you for doing this with me and um, sending you definitely encouragement and prana and may you be surrounded by everything that you need. And also the same for everyone watching because we're in this together. We're not alone. This is one teeny tiny little planet. Yeah. Really little, little planet. <laughs> And thank you so much. And you guys watching, go check out Christina's work at christinamartin.com. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-M-A-R-T-I-N-E. Christina Martin. It, it's how it's spelled. It sounds how it sounds. Spelled how it sounds. Dot <laughs> com. <laughs> and um, check out Fifth Dimensional Healing. Yeah, I, I know that your work is amazing. And yeah, I think it will help people. If you're curious about what's going on, go look and see. And also, you have a YouTube and stuff, too, that they can go see. Is all that linked through your website? It's all there, yeah. Just, just search me up. I'm, I'm all over. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you. So glad to connect again. Thank you, Karis. It was beautiful. And thank you, everybody, mm. for, for holding space and for yourself and for other people and just being the light. We need, we need it. <laughs> Amen. <All right>. Bye, <laughs> everybody. <laughs>